Thompson stood out among professional golfers as someone not totally obsessed with the game. He was and is an accomplished writer. Briefly, he tangled with Australian politics. Always, he had a winning smile and dignity that endeared him to British galleries. In the 50s, I was a sort of lone ranger, as it were. Every British player was actually a club pro. They had other duties, other worries. They didn't really rely on winning prize money to keep the wolf, the wolf from the door. So I suppose there was a different attitude come the championship. And, you know, I must have been a bit more ready and hungry, I suppose is the word, than they were. 1956, at Hoylake, Thompson then defied history and earned everlasting acclaim by winning the Open for the third successive year. I remember Peter Thompson at Hoylake when he won and I finished fourth. It was pouring and Mike Suchak shot 88 in the morning, in pouring rain, and as Peter Thompson got on that tee, the rain just stopped. This modest 26-year-old Australian has calmly bought off the record feat of winning the Open Golf Championship three years in succession. Some golfer. Thompson made it four in five years after a playoff at Lytham. I sat in the clubhouse at Lytham and Dave Thomas and Peter Thompson tied. And I remember the secretary was so kind to me. He said, come and sit in here, we look through my window. And so I sat in the secretary's office and I saw them tie. I said, man, I'd love to be the youngest man to win this championship next year of which I was at 23. 23 year old Gary Player of South Africa quickly caught the gallery's attention. I was, um, I think about seven shots behind and I said to Humphrey McMaster at that time, I said, Mr. McMaster, I'm gonna win the Open tomorrow. I'm playing so well. He said, my dear chap, that would be a, a small miracle if you did that. I said, well, you watch. I vividly remember that. And then c coming to the last hole, I uh, needed a four for 66 in that wind and the wind was really blowing and I got a double bogey. And I was really upset about it and uh, I thought I might have lost the Open Championship. And I went back to my hotel because I played so much earlier than they did that I went back to my hotel and had a shower and uh, brought out my white suit in case I won it and my white, white suit on and my white shoes. And uh, I remember walking up and down from the clubhouse down to that front gate and back with, with excitement that I could possibly be the winner of the Open Championship. The 1960s brought Arnold Palmer and the advent of the Americans who followed him over. Despite Palmer being pipped at the post in 1960, he won in 61 and 62 to thunderous applause. Palmer's arrival created renewed interest in the Open. Well, 63 was the only major tournament that I never played in that I gave away. Uh, I bogeyed the last two holes to lose that tournament by one. I thought I'd tied when I finished, and I didn't. Left-hander Bob Charles set new standards of putting in 1963. I, I never had a lesson in my life. Uh, in my early days, there was no professional around. Uh, I just picked up the game instinctively, played naturally. Most putters used a very handy, wristy action, and I was perhaps the first one to come along with a, a, a stiff-wristed uh, technique. The swinging 60s and a return to Hoylake and Liverpool, now the epicenter of the cultural phenomenon that was the Beatles. The magical mystery tour to victory was about to happen for the 45-year-old Argentinian. My chance is not very good and I am 70 to 1. I won more money in the, in the, in the bet than the, in the tournament. I bet 100 pounds and I make 7,000 pounds, and the, and the tuna make 4,000 pounds. <laughs> make much different, huh? The first live television transmissions were from St. Andrews in 1957, but coverage was usually limited to newsreels until the late 60s. In fact, we didn't have television. There was no televised golf. We used to have to wait for, you know, 16 millimeter film. And, and the British Open 1969 at, at Lytham was the one Tony Jackman won. And I guess I saw that in about the tail end of 1969. So I was about 12 years old then. Um, and, you know, it just made such an impression on me. I'd been pretty into golf at that stage, but uh, that really uh, inspired me. Well, I was the last one to win the British Open with a small ball because the big ball became mandatory after that. Um, 
first one to do its own colour television as well as <laughs> whatever that means. The return to St Andrews in 1970 signified a year of dramas when Nicholas, Sanders, Jacqueline and Trevino were all in the frame. Yeah. 1970, I came here and I made a, 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 the mistake that I made in 1970 is that I took too long over the putts. You remember the wind was blowing 35 to 40 mile an hour and um, hit the ball well from tee to green. I mean, with a little pitch and run, I had a two stroke lead going to the last round, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I've three putted five times uh, on the last day. And I've always talked about the 18th hole and we, we named it the, the it's a fair way of broken dreams uh, and uh, I I thought that the play was uh, not not a smart play uh, I the wind was behind us blowing extremely hard he drove the ball 55 yards from the valley of sin could have putted the ball I uh, could have done anything except taken a sand wedge and gone high but you don't go high on 18 going through the valley of sin uh, first of all, that ball is not going to stop on these greens because uh, it's what the Open Championship is about. You want it to run fast. And um, if you ask Sanders today, you know, he might tell you that he would do the same thing, but I don't think so. This is who he is. He sees a non-existent obstacle, stops to pick it up, turned out to be a blade of grass. Pre putted the last from, from sort of the Valley of Sin and uh, felt like I'd lost the tournament when I did that. And then uh, Sanders had it up to have a little tap in putt to win and uh, he missed it. And I, said, and I was sort of real down and dejected. And I was sort of all of a sudden I looked at him and I said, You got to be kidding. Off we go. Here we go again. A devastated Sanders had to set off for an 18 hole playoff, which Nicholas not only won, but took off his sweater to play a shot which would inspire the next generation of golfers playing the old course. Actually, people think I took it off because I wanted to drive the green. I took it off because it was getting warm. And uh, I took, took the sweater off and hit, uh, hit my drive uh, through the green, actually. And uh, fortunate that there was rough behind the green. Otherwise, I'd probably been out of bounds. And uh, played a very nice pitch out of that to about... Uh, I guess what was it, seven or eight feet, something like that. And then, of course, I, I made the same putt that Sanders missed the day before. Actually, when I came over here in 1975, um, I qualified on the old course uh, for the Open at Carnoustie. It was either extremely hot that summer or they didn't have water because I, I got on the 18th tee and drove the green, drove it through the green at the age of 18. And after having watched Jack Nicklaus drive it over the green in 1970, I sort of thought to myself, well, who's Jack Nicklaus, you know? It was a victory that Nicholas never expected. But what happened to the club he threw? I don't know, I didn't watch it. I was, I, I, when I threw it up, all of a sudden I knew it was gonna come down and dug his head, so I got him out of the way. <laughs> 